So, how do we get into Microsoft Forms Pro? Um, if you're already using Office 365, click on the waffle here, click into Forms application on here. You might need to click All Apps and then it'll be down there. As soon as you click into that, it will take you into Forms. Um, if you've already been using Forms and you want to get into Forms Pro, you might find that sometimes it gets stuck in a bit of a loop. Um, you can click over here on your profile and you can click here, look. So you can switch between the old Forms and Forms Pro. If I just click on there, you'll see that will click back to MS Forms. And of course, when you're in Forms, you can click here, switch to Forms Pro. That will take you into here. Um, once you're in here, obviously you can click New Pro Survey, which is part of Forms Pro, and you can start building out some surveys. Be very mindful that obviously, you know, you have to pick the survey per environment. And if you find you've created a survey in here and it's in the wrong environment, which I've done many a time, you can click on here and you can click copy. As soon as you click copy, you can just copy the survey or you can use this option here, copy to environment. You can then copy this to another environment. Once you go into a survey, you can then start adding in some questions. So you can see here, you get the, the add new option. Click add new and it will give you a few different types of options so you can see choice is it a text and then you can type in your question and your answers um, you can obviously then pull in here you know things like is this going to be a mandatory question that needs to be answered is it visible um, obviously you can have subtitles in there once you've put these questions in you can obviously recopy these you can see you click copy question and that will copy the question you can see like that I've now got question four um, obviously if you need to delete anything you can click delete on here and of course you can see here, you can move these up and down. So I wanted that to be question two, I can just easily move that up. Um, and if I don't, I wanna move it down here, I can move it down here as well. So again, if I don't want that, I can just delete it. Um, once you add in these in, you can see in here, you can start typing this question in. Uh, and then in here, you can see we have the option of adding in variables. So you can see first name, last name, and email, um, are variables that I've already got added to the system. You can add a new variable by clicking on here. Alternatively, if you want to add this up here, you can click on the ellipsis and click survey variables. You can then just click new variable here, and then you can add in a value in here. What this will then do, and obviously if you're in this section, you can then just remove any variables that you might have previously added in here like this. You cannot remove first name and last name. These are the only two variables that come out of the box. Obviously then you can add to this as you saw, I've just put email in here. And this will be email as well. All this would mean is whoever we're going to send this to eventually, whether this is going from a Dynamics view, whether this is going to be a trigger in using Power Automate or an individual email send, it will always pull in the variable that you've specified in your survey or in your email subject. And you can see it will pull in the variables that you've got over here. So if we look at question one, you can see I've just put overall, how would you rate our customer service? And just by removing this you can see when I clicked into here we then added in this variable so you can see just by positioning where you want to add the variable you click where you want it to go click your variable and then of course you can pull from those variables that you've got stored so if I just put first name and space whoever I send it to then it's going to say their name and then obviously it's going to ask that question um, of course there are loads of other things that you can do in here on the questions you know it's this sort of rating field that you can have, different stars, numbers, smileys, different levels you can have. Best off just messing around with that. And of course you can then have branching rules as well if you need to, you can have branching rules. So you could say, based on this being maybe three and above, then move to question three, or skip question three and four and move to question five. You can have branching rules in here on these questions if you need to. So that's how we add questions to the survey. Once you've done that, you can obviously then set yourself a nice theme so you can change the color control. You can click on the plus here. You can add your custom themes in yourself and add your own logo and your own sort of corporate colors if you need to. Um, and then once you've done that, if you wanna just quickly preview it, you click on the preview tab here. It will show you what it looks like and how it's gonna render on a computer or on a mobile device just over here. Once you fill out your survey, you're happy with the preview and the theme, you can click on the send option over here on the top right. As soon as you click on here, you've got five different options. So if we click on email, 
you can see you can embed your survey into an individual email which we're going to come on to in a second and how you can send this out power automate is allowing you to obviously put this into uh, you know a, a trigger so we can create a power automate um, flow for this and then have a trigger based on a value um, we've got the embed option here so as soon as you click embed you can see you know select how it displays select, select the embedded style what it looks like um, and of course then you can generate the code and then you give this to your website developer you can embed this on your website you've got the link option over here if you click on link you can see it gives you a generic link here you just click copy and then you can ex send this out externally however you need to in whichever forms you need to send it out in and then the last option here is a QR code you can download the QR code and obviously then again it's it, share this externally for people that might need to scan this on a QR code scanner app. So the email send option, you can see once you click on the email send here, it will pull in your um, survey into your uh, body of your email. Um, you can see here, you can start typing in here, you know, dear, whoever it is that you're searching for and you can you can mess around with this. Equally, you have these email send templates over here. So if you wanted to pick a predefined one that you've got saved, you can see it will then just give you, you know, dear first name, thank you for contacting us and all the details in here. You can then go through and tweak this. You can change the font sizes, the fonts. You can embed some images. You can embed tables in here. It's a rich text editor. Of course, it has this in here. You can use this insert option. You can insert the survey link down here so you can show how that looks. And of course, you can embed this unsubscribe option as well, which would then write back to your common data service if they unsubscribe. Um, equally, like we did with variables in the survey, you can say dear, you know, I've got here dear first name, if I wanted to then insert last name as well, I could do first name, last name. Um, if I don't want that, just remove it. But now it's just gonna say dear first name. Um, and then we're obviously ready to send this. The subject line's pulled in from this template. You could like say create this from scratch. You can click here, save as, and then you can save this as a template going forward. And it will be the event available in here as a drop down the next time you want to send another one um, and then when it comes to sending to recipients i could certainly type in just somebody who's in my contact list so you can see i could send this just to helen for example if i needed to here and that will pull that person in here um, obviously the variable will be sat against you know it's going to say dear helen it's send it to her first name because that's stored against the contact here in common data service or equally over here I could start typing in, you know, one of my views that is coming from Dynamics. You can see I've got this top clients view. So if I pick that, that's going to send it to the individual Helen and to all my top clients. Just to show you that, if I just flick over here to my Dynamics instance and in my contacts, you can see it's looking at all of my personal views logged in as my user and any other system views that I might well have had. In here, it's going to go to all of these people. And you can see Helen Brown is obviously on this list, so hopefully it's going to go to her. So this is where you can pull in views. I think that's really useful. Equally, you could quite easily just come over here and click import recipients and you can import straight from a CSV file if you need to. Once you're happy with that, you just then click send down here. I'm not going to send it to all of those people for now, so I'm just going to send it just to Helen just to show you how this renders. You then click send and it will say, you know, if you've adjusted this template, it will say you can just click save or you can send it without saving. If you click save again, it will go into the templates list over here. For now, I'm just gonna click send without saving. And then you can see it allows you to then go through and do another email. If we now come over here to Helen's email box, you can see this is logged in as Helen and this is what it looks like. So we can then go in here and you can see the variables coming through. So dear Helen, of course, there's the, the link that we had in our uh, the embedded link that we had there's the unsubscribe link if we need to fill that out helen can then click in here click start survey when she clicks start survey again we use the variable in the question one so it's now saying helen how overall how would you rate our service she said we're brilliant so we've got this you know not so great dissatisfied through to happy um, and we're going to give you a, a rating of nine as well again not not so likely or extremely likely so she's extremely likely to recommend us to a colleague she fills this out she clicks submit and thanks for your response and then of course she can go around her everyday life but if we now come back to dynamics in here what you will then see if we click into helen brown's contact record in the database you can see this will now write back to the system so you can see here's the initial invite that we sent her out 
So this will obviously show all of the people that we've sent a survey to. The fact that she's actually gone through and filled out her response, you can see we see this response also on her timeline in here. So when we click in this and we just open this record, you'll see all the details around this response. So it's to Helen, it was around this survey that we've got here, you can see the survey. And then in real time here, look, you can see her responses down here. So you can see that she gave us this smiley face, she gave us a rating of nine, and we've got these question responses down here. So you see that on the individual person's timeline that you've sent it to. And equally, if you wanted to customize your sitemap over here, like I've done, at any one time you can click into surveys and see all your surveys. There's our survey there. And of course then survey responses. So I can click on survey responses and there's the one I've just had back from Helen. The Helen Brown survey responses in here as well as any other responses we've got. Survey invites, if you want to just monitor these, look at all of the ones that you've sent out. Regardless of whether you've got a response or not, you can have your survey invites down here as well on the left hand side like this. If we go back to the actual survey itself, over here, we just click back on this. When we click into here, you can see it will start telling you about the number of responses you've got. So when you click in here, you click on responses, you'll see there's now four responses. When we click on four responses, there's those three I had previously. And of course, there's the new one that we've just got from Helen Brown in here as a response. You can then start spotting these trends and using some of these analytics on here. Um, and you can also export this to Excel if you need to. You can search individuals' names or email addresses and you can search on in specific dates as well if you want to put a date in here. So effectively, you can then just export all of those responses out to Excel and do some nice reports in there if you need to. So we've just seen how we can send out one of these surveys via an email send or to a Dynamics view. The other option we have is to embed this using Power Automate. So again, when we click on the send option, as you can see in here, you can see how many invites have been sent. From here as well, you get these analytics. On the Power Automate tab here, we can see that there are no flows currently configured to send a survey out based on a trigger point. So we can click on here, configure us flow. You can see it will embed it like it did previously. And again, you can pick the template that you wanna send out. So we can use this template again. All the other details and add your variables in that you might need. Click configure a flow here, and it will then show you a few predefined flow templates that Microsoft have already sort of provisioned for us. So in here, you can see send a survey when a case is resolved, based on a Power Apps click, based on a lead getting qualified, um, you know, when an order's fulfilled. And of course, over here, you can create one completely from blank, blank and set your own parameters around that and what your trigger points are. For now, I'm just gonna click send a survey when a case is resolved. You click in here, you click create flow, and you can see it's now successfully configured that. When we click back into here, you will then see when you click on the send option, one flow is configured. If you click into this, you'll see then all the details around this, and if you need to get to that, to navigate to it, you just click on the little edit option here. It'll take you into your Power Automate area, and of course you can come in here and then you can just click edit. You can go through this and mess around and all it's gonna show you is it's done all of this for you. So it's telling you on this environment, on this entity, what it's gonna be, you know, if I just expand that, you can see it's status equals five. So I know five on a case status reason is when it's resolved basically. It's going to then say yes, once that equals that, send it to then, you know, because we're sending it to customer, if it's the account, send it down here. And if it's the contact entity, send it down this route. So we've done all of that, that's already in place, it's now active. If we come over here to our database and we go into one of these cases, then you can see it's against Helen, and we come up here, you can see currently there's nothing in this timeline for a survey. We click resolve case, resolve the case in the usual manner, just click resolved in here, save and close that. That now resolved is obviously integer value five, which is the trigger for our Power Automate. This now sends a survey out. If we just refresh this here, you can see we've now got the survey invite over here, which appears on the timeline against the individual case, and this will roll up to Helen's contact record as well in the system. If we come over here to Helen, and we just refresh her inbox, you can see, thank you for contacting support. If we click into this, you can see there's the previous one. And of course, we can click start survey in the usual manner. So we can say, no, 
wasn't too happy and I'm going to give you five on this. Submit that. What we just did on the previous one where you can see then the survey responsive, it's the same survey. So we're going to go into the same survey area. Equally then when we come back over here to Dynamics, we refresh this. You'll see the actual response like we saw previously. Now let the survey response is in here. And again over here, it will go into your survey response. We've now got the one originally for Helen that we did as the individual email send. And we've got now this one against the individual case as well, which is this one here. 